Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time I'm playing in the Scorpion along with Jingles, who's also playing in a Scorpion, and Ike, who is playing in a Panther 88. The reason why I'm featuring this tank today is because, in theory, today should be the day it is released for the North American server and hopefully the European server. I'm just praying we don't know for sure, but hopefully it'll be out on the EU server because I want to pick one of these up fairly quickly. Because, but honestly, I think it's been the most enjoyable tier 8 premium that I've played in a while. It's just so different, and it's also maybe just a little bit overpowered, but let's not tell them, hey guys. This was the very first game that I played in this tank after I finished my tank review from a week ago. Now, I'm going to go into some of the details of the Scorpion, but if you really want to know absolutely everything about this tank, maybe you want to watch the tank review before you watch this video, because I'm going to be talking more about how the Scorpion actually plays out on the map and the certain matchups that you get and then more or less the tactics uh, rather than the ins and outs of the vehicle. Now me and Jingles were sitting here thinking he's not going to come out around the corner, right? Uh, yes, yes he is. We've done 921 damage to that poor Panther 2 there. He doesn't even spot us. We've got a fairly good camo crew on this tank. Well, a fairly good. We've got pretty much the optimal camo setting for this tank i.e. 100% on the concealment, we're also using a camo net and we're also using a chocolate which will boost our crew skills as well as brothers in arms. I can't use ventilation though as it is an open top tank because you really want to squeeze out as much camo rating as you can in this vehicle because its camo rating is not great but you, you still want to cover it up otherwise your opponents are going to be seeing you at very long ranges and you'll see quite often during this replay that I managed to sneak extra shots out without getting spotted so just count them but the reason why i really love the scorpion is the alpha damage yeah that's not even a high roll that's a, a low roll 475 damage done to that t54 mod one and that impact gives our team the courage to push over and to take him out cleanly well you don't really need to give that much encouragement to a skoda t50 you know that tier 9 czechoslovakian medium tank with a, a three round magazine or with a hundred millimeters in it on its main armament capable of dishing out you know 960 damage within 3.6 seconds that is a crazy tank I put a round into the T25 2 this time it was slightly high 535 and Ike manages to take him down now I'm going to be using the speed of the Scorpion now I, I feel like we've got an absolute lemming train well not really a lemming train well Actually, yeah, now that Jingles and Ike have left the train, I think I can call them a lemming train. <laughs> They're on their way towards the base, and I just felt like uh, we would have an opportunity to maybe get some nice soft shots in across the south, where hopefully we can help out the Lerva and the Ferdinand, who are going to be boldly defending against a series of probably high-tier tanks who are going to be trying to take on our cap circle. Now, you know, Highway is always a, a funny old map when this kind of thing happens. One team takes the east, one team takes the west, and then they advance through the north and the south, respectively. But it, when you've got the speed of the Scorpion, and it's amazing how well this ties in with a tank such as the Panther 88. So maybe you're a tank destroyer lover, but you play in your platoons with your friends who are playing vehicles such as the AMX CDC or tanks like that, and you want to still play with them and keep up with them, but you're not really like a medium tank fan then I, found, I think that the Scorpion could fit in very well in premium tank platoons if you're not a medium tank lover. So the Scorpion with its 60 km an hour top speed limit was easily able to get back. You know, not the best power to weight ratio, 17, and the ground resistance is 1.2 on hard, 1.5 on soft, and three, sorry, 1.5 on medium, and three on soft uh, are far from amazing. But I guess it's what you're seeing that really matters. And while you don't get up to that top speed limit of 60 very often, unless you're going down a slight gradient, you do bomb it around at about 45, 55 even, and that is more than enough. One thing you don't want to do in this tank is get hit very often though. 1,150 hit points, that's 150 less than the last time I played this at Gamescom last year. And that doesn't go a long way, especially when you think that other heavily armoured, well, other tank destroyers that actually have armor such as the Ferdinand now are sitting on 1,500 hit points hey guys so this M103 is doing a cracking job here and with the 0.3 accuracy of the Scorpion I was really hoping that I could be able to get a shot into the M103 there 
or at least into the, the weak point on top of his tank. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like I quite nailed it. I get tracked, I repair it instantly, and a good thing too, because it looks like an SU-152, or some kind of high explosive tank on the enemy team, took a swing at us. And when you've got absolutely no armor, well, to be exact, I think it's got 16 millimeters of frontal turret armor, 30 millimeters of frontal hull armor, that means that all manner of high explosive rounds are going to completely decimate your health. Now, unfortunately, Jingles tried to flank the M103 there, and I, I felt a little bit bad at the time because I, I guess if I'd been able to go in with Jingles there, we would have probably taken out the M103 cleanly, and maybe we would have both survived. My idea, and I probably didn't communicate this at the time, was that I was trying to go over here to get side shots into the M103's turret. I thought I would try and use my mobility to be able to relocate, and also to try and support the tanks towards the north at the same time with this next move. Now we hit the Super Pershing, and then we put in a nice round into the T-10. Your shell velocity isn't the best in this tank, 920 meters per second, but again, with that 0.3 accuracy, if you miss, it's generally down to you. 1,078 damage done to a top tier heavy tank on the enemy team. That tier 9 heavy tank is certainly not feeling very well. And while your rate of fire is not quite as good as the Borsig, it is good enough to simply just rip apart your opponents. Now I have no idea why the IS-6 actually stopped there. Maybe it was actually me tracking him that stopped him, but it looked like he might have been stopping to take a shot. Nevertheless, we got him in place now, let's punish him. One into his side, 460 damage. We're not going to be able to spot him anymore, unfortunately, as the Yag Tiger drops, who I believe was lighting him up for us. But we're going to take another shot anyway. Okay, off with his head. Looks like we Amaracked that locked in place IS-6. Great result for us there. We'll have to see how much bonus damage there is at the end of the game. Because remember, while this hit log, or should we say the damage counter at the top, is absolutely awesome, it only takes into account damage that you have seen. And we certainly didn't see that. Now I wait for the Panther 2 to be behind the bush there before I fire. I was hoping that that might give me an extra bit of concealment. Or maybe it's just because he's got a very bad crew. But luckily, we don't get spotted. I'm quite surprised about that because I think I was pretty much about 350, maybe 380 meters away from him. And when you fire, your camera rating gets very bad in this tank. And so I was expecting to get spotted. However, I've made my way into a bush now. We're going to activate our camo net and we're calling in reinforcements. Ike is on his way. Ike is also quite healthy. He's still got 63% of his health. And right now this game is neck and neck. I just felt like there was no point in really pushing in along the south. We needed to deal with the north. And when you're playing in tanks like this, which have a very good view range with the setup that I have, and also um, well, while its camera rating is not amazing, as soon as you start to have full concealment on your crew, you're using chocolate, which will boost their crew skills a little bit more, which actually does affect your camo rating, as well as having a camo net, then this tank is actually very proficient, I'd say at the 350 to 450 meter mark. So we definitely spotted that T10 there. A nice round into him, 452 damage. That's the third time we've hit this fellow, 1,530 total. And Ike, as steady and as reliable as ever, manages to finish off the T10. Great result, now it is 10 kills for each team. We are just shy of 5,000 damage so far. And let's not forget, we also have that X amount of damage from the SU-1, uh, sorry, from the IS-6 that we dealt. This is by far the best game I've had so far in the Scorpion. And it's not like I've played this tank that much. So I've probably played maybe 10 games in it, but this was, this is by far the best game I've been having so far. One of the, what I guess one of the reasons why we might be so successful this game is just the, the work that I'm doing with Ike and having that reassurance from, from this point of the game onwards. And also it's the top speed limit of the Scorpion and the mobility that you can effectively get to where you need to go. And when you get there, you've got, frankly, a gun that's just as good and in some ways better than the Borsig's gun when you get there. Its aim time is slightly better, but we've discussed the dispersion is slightly worse. It's the 0.3 accuracy that I really feel makes it for me with the Scorpion. That 0.3 accuracy, you just feel so sure when you're putting the rounds in. And when you're playing a premium tank and you get those gigantic experience and credit multipliers when you actually hit the target, I, I don't get that disappointment of, oh, if only, if only that shot had gone in. Because generally, if you aim it properly, it is going to be going in with its 246 millimeters of penetration on its standard rounds and a whopping 311 on its premium rounds. 
But, as I said in my review, I hadn't actually needed to fire any premium rounds yet. And the only reason why I'm going to have to fire them in this game is because I'm going to have to run out of standard ammunition for the amount of ass that we've been kicking. So Ike is on four kills, I'm on one kill, he has definitely been kill securing here. But that's the kind of thing that you're going to be able to work in. Generally the tanks with the higher alpha damage I feel get less kills than the tanks that have a better rate of fire and lower alpha damage because they just do it in chunks, right? And also they can tie in the shots and work it in together around the tanks that do have that stopping power and you know they all they all work together to accomplish the same thing in the end which is to take down the enemy team. And talking about taking down the enemy team, now we've dealt with the north, it's very unlikely the enemies are going to be pushing along there into the ambush. That poor uh, T-10 that made his way through the center of the map was really one of their big hopes. Certainly one of their better players in their top tier tanks. And for him to be shut down so, so brutally in the center of the map, it's very unlikely that the enemy team are going to advance into our gun line. And so, with four minutes left on the game, it's certainly up to us now to attack them. And that's one of the key things that you've got to get a feeling for in World of Tanks, when it's time to defend, and ultimately, when it's time to attack. So the CDC gets spotted most likely by the Lerva, but luckily me and Ike are not spotted, and also the Skoda T50, who is now up to five kills on our team. Whoa, he has played a lot of games of World of Tanks. 69,000 games? Are you kidding me? He's played over twice the amount of World of Tanks that I've played? And this is kind of the equivalent of my occupation or my job. Holy crap, that guy could have done two jobs worth of World of Tanks. That's absolutely ludicrous. But we're, without faffing around talking about that stuff now, make a bit of a misplay here. I go right in front of the IS-2, but luckily I do punish him with the 503 damage that we deal to him. And he manages to only track us, which was very lucky. But I'd already used my repair kit earlier on. And so I should count my uh, I should count my lucky stars right now that I'm still alive, because if that IS-2 had penned me there and not just taken my tracks off, I'd be out of this. But I'm pretty sure that Ike and the Skoda T50 would have been able to take it down. Anyway, we put our second round into the IS-2, and I was hoping Ike was going to finish him off, but the Skoda T50 jumps up and secures his top gun. So I loaded a high explosive round there, hoping that I was going to get to cheap out and not fire the APCR round and do the extra damage to the AMX CDC. However, now seeing the 421 hit points is well below the 490 average, I'd probably be better using the APCR rounds here. There's the IS-3, we're going to see if we can loop a shell into him. Yes, we can. That's our second kill of the game. Now we're closing in on 6,000 damage, plus whatever we didn't see earlier. So from here, it's really just a case of cleaning up. We got the ambush, we worked in, we put in some sneaky shots under the train tracks, we're working together with our platoon mate, Ike in his Panther 88, and now the chase is on with two minutes left on the game. That is the alarm bells literally being sounded in game. It's now time to, to go for it and let the chips fall where they may. The SU-152 is taken down by the T-50 on our team, and now it's just a case of hunting down that AMX CDC, or alternatively, going and capping. Luckily for us, we've got a Lerva who's in a, a more westerly position than us and a Yag Panther. Hopefully they'll be able to spot the AMX CDC if he decides to run. Or alternatively, with the coated optics that we have on the Scorpion, we should be able to spot him as we make our way towards the cap circle. There he is, now 1 minute and 20 seconds left on the game. I'm not messing around. Doesn't look like we're going to cap, even though we could cap still. Let's go and secure the kill if we can. He's got 421 hit points. That should be enough for us to take him out. He kills the Yag Panther, and we shut him down. What a result for the Scorpion here. That's our third of the game. 6,357 damage that we dealt, which would be absolutely awesome for any tank, let alone a brand new tier 8 premium. And so during the live stream last week, a lot of people were calling the Scorpion a tier 8 Hellcat, and that's not a bad thing. And you know what? The more rounds that I play in this vehicle, the more that I'm inclined to agree with you. This result was possible because the excellent mobility of the tank allowed us to get to where we needed to go. And when we got there, we had the flexibility of a fully traversable turret, seven degrees of gun depression, a fairly decent rate of fire, but an awesome alpha damage of 490 and 0.3 accuracy. 
what more can I say? This was one of, if not the biggest round I've ever had in a tier 8 premium tank. And I've played a lot of tier 8 premium tanks. We got a high caliber medal here for the 7,447 damage that we dealt. A confederate medal for hitting at least 6 enemy tanks that other players destroyed. And also a tank sniper medal for dishing out 5,560 damage from over 300 meters. This was a whopping 1,740. 49 base experience points that is a gigantic amount of crew training and we made 183,000 credits after we take away our ammunition costs that's 146,000 credits profit. Do you know the only thing that sucks about this round this tank and this game is the fact that this wasn't even on my account god Darn it, I really wish this was on mine and I posted a big score like that. But hopefully I'll be able to fix that quickly. I want to pick one of these up ASAP. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys can do in this tank and seeing all of your replays on the replays website. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. It really helps the channel out. And if you haven't seen it already, then click through up here or use that more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen to see my full review of the Roymetal Scorpion. And let me know in the comments down below, do you have a tier 8 premium? And if you do, what is the highest? highest amount of credits you've ever been able to get in one. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.